In this video, I'm going to explain to you what big leaguers are looking at inside their hat when they're playing defense. And I'm gonna show you exactly a live look on what one of these defensive alignment cards look like right now. So if you're new here, my name is Evan Mendoza, and I'm quite literally that baseball guy that talks development, mentality, and even recruiting. And I help high school baseball players play at the next level, giving them a reliable path while eliminating errors, which is inside my Mendoza Baseball Academy. If you're a varsity high school baseball player, I could potentially help you. So make sure to click the link down below in the description for more information. But let's get into these defensive alignment sheets and what exactly they look like. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step on how to read one of these cards, because it's not entirely the easiest process. And if you're a high school baseball player or maybe even a college baseball player, there's maybe like a one or 2% chance that you've actually seen one of these before. And then maybe you've actually even used one before. I don't know if many colleges are doing this or they're just using the simple coach, you know, that's telling you left or right or farther back or come back in. So this is basically a sheet where you can be a little bit more independent of that. So let's get into it. All right, so let's get into what these defensive alignment sheets really look like. So as you can tell, this was when I was with the St. Louis Cardinals, by the way, and we were actually playing the Miami Marlins in spring training, March 22nd, 2022. I was playing third. This is for right-handed pitchers. When they're on the mound, that's when we're gonna use that black side. When it's the red side, it's the very same thing, but against, as you can tell, left-handed pitcher, all right? So this is something that you have to really take note of and uh, make sure that you study this before the game. They usually hand these out, I would say an hour before the game, maybe 30 minutes before the game, if you're lucky. And then sometimes if you're backing up, which is what I was doing a lot in spring training, they'll hand it to you as you're going into the game. So you have to kind of understand the hitters Obviously the starting lineup in spring training is gonna differ and that's why we have the reserves down below. So we have JJ Belide, um, Encarnacion, you know, uh, Birdie, Isan Diaz, uh, a, a lot of good players actually on this lineup. Um, Aguilar, Rojas, Cooper, Jazz. So as you can tell, this is a pretty stacked lineup for, for the Marlins that specific day. Uh, a lot of star power on this lineup. So. Before I get into all of the information, as you can tell, there's a lot of stuff for, let's say, like Jesus Aguilar. Uh, I'm going to go over also what one of these look like, all right? So this is, again, for spring training, and this is going to be put inside the hat. I'm going to explain to you exactly how to do that. And if I feel far away, it's probably because the mic right here is attached still to my hat. So the way that we would do this, it was we would put it inside the lip of the inside of the hat right there. That way there's like that little crevice and that way we're able to keep all of our documents, if you will, inside of our hats. Every once in a while we'll have, um, you know, these things fall out. And I always think it's funny because then we get to kind of see their signs or see their defensive alignments. Nothing that's gonna be super dramatic and plus they can always change up their signs very, very quickly. So as you can tell right now, this was for spring training and this was more or less for the pitchers and catchers, and then also for the shortstops, the second basemen, and the sometimes even center fielders, right? So what this is, is basically what um, pitch is going to be thrown, all right, as far as different sequences. Every once in a while, there's gonna be a time where we feel as, you know, our team, we feel like the other team is stealing our signs. So what this would do, and this would be a counter for that, the catcher would come up step up in front of the plate, get the attention of the shortstop and second baseman, and especially the hitter, I mean, sorry, and especially the pitcher, and this is all done while there's a runner on second base, all right, because usually that's when they steal signs. So the catcher would get everyone's attention and basically throw up either a one, two, three, four, or five, all right? And the idea of that is basically, this is what's going to be um, done as far as our pitch sequence. So the catcher could throw up his signs like, um, let's say two, one, two, three. Basically, if that was under number one, that means they're chasing the, the one, all right? So if I, again, two, that doesn't matter, chase the one, meaning whatever comes after the one, that's what the pitch is gonna be thrown. So two, all right? So two, one, now we grab their attention, whatever the next, sign is two, three. So two is the pitch. Usually that's like a curveball, right? If we were under two, first sign, 
First sign is, you know, whatever the first sign is, all right? So three was the first sign. That means usually change up or whatever. Pretty obvious as far as three and four, meaning second and third sign. Five is the chase three. So that means like one, two, one, three, four. You know, that could be like a slider or something like that. And then shake means basically do the same thing. Um, it's gonna be the same uh, sequence. This was just a way to counter the whole, um, you know, pitch clock and then also making sure that we don't disengage in any way. So making sure that we have a, a set of rules basically to follow when we feel like the opposing team is are, are stealing our signs. Um, obviously we don't know that for sure. So let's go into exactly what this is as far as the defensive alignment. There's a lot of information on here, so I'm gonna try to cover it to the best of my ability. Let's just go over the left-handed pitcher. Obviously the, the other side is very, very similar and it reads the same way. So as you can tell in the middle of your screen, I'm trying to do my best to make sure that it's, you know, uh, what I'm talking about is in the screen, but uh, you'll see the third, this is for third base. So you, of course you wanna make sure that you have the right defensive alignment. If you're reading the one for first base, it's gonna be dramatically different. All right, so you see R1B, and that's when there is a runner on first base. How should we play that individual hitter? So you can see a one for Jazz Chisholm. So that means slightly pull side, but nothing too dramatic. Runner in scoring position, all right? How should we play him? Pretty straight up, considering there's nothing under him, right? There's nothing, um, there's no double play that needs to be made, so let's just play him straight up. That way we have the best chance to be able to get him out. And then last but not least, 2K, meaning whenever there's two strikes on Jazz Chisholm, how do we play him? All right, so as you can tell, the two that you can see in the middle of your screen right to the right of his name, that means basically, you know, that's gonna be in any other generic situation, nobody on. Um, we want to play him slightly pull because he is a very pull happy hitter. Two is usually a, an above average pull hitter Every once in a while, you might come across like a four, meaning like, hey, that's gonna be a, an extreme shift. As you can tell with two strikes for Lisan Diaz, we wanna make sure, I believe that's Lisan, um, or Laz Diaz, I, I don't remember exactly. But the four means like an extreme, extreme shift. Um, obviously the shift has changed, but four would be like the maximum of wherever we can play in whatever the rules are of, uh, of the game since they're constantly changing. There's usually going to be some notes also because this, these are going to be tendencies of what the hitter actually does. So, um, you know, this is going to be a base hit to second base. He does like basically hit, hits the ball in the second base area a lot for base hits. Uh, he'll also chop the chopped ground balls with two strikes. I'm kind of reading this as we go along. And then we also want third base to stay close because he might lay down a bunt. Uh, I believe that's Garrett Cooper um, infield. 1B, 1B is at 2K, meaning um, he's gonna have a lot of two strike hits, all right? Shoot 4H, runner moving, 1B off. So he'll shoot the four hole with the, running, with the runner moving, so he likes to probably hit and run a lot. It opens up the right side for Garrett Cooper to be able to have the first baseman, you know, occupying first base, holding on the runner. That gives him basically the entire right side of the field to be able to just poke it and get a base hit out of it, all right? 1B at two plus, sometimes you just have to use your imagination because to be honest with you, a lot of these you know, abbreviations, I don't necessarily know exactly. And that's where you have to make sure that you have the same um, language of basically whoever writes this up, usually it's the defensive coach. It might be an infield coach. It might be uh, an assistant coach, or it could even be an analytical guy. So uh, making sure that you know what their abbreviations are is very, very important. Um, Let's do Jesus Aguilar, for example. So grass, you know, runners at 1B and runners in scoring position, two strike, 3B at negative one, 1B hold. So this is basically a lot of information. So it sounds like when there's a runner on first base and runners in scoring position, two strikes, third base, we wanna make sure that he's actually going opposite. So he's basically, Jesus Aguilar is a very un um, pull happy guy. So negative means we're gonna play him like he always shoots the ball the other way. He's a guy that goes oppo a lot. So whenever there's two strike, you can bet your money that Jesus Aguilar is not going to pull the ball, all right? So hopefully this is like a pretty good understanding of like what these defensive alignments really look like and how to read them. Obviously, sometimes we don't have as much information 
Um, so, see, like, J.J. Bolide, this was before, I believe, he made his debut. So, like, we didn't really have a ton of information on him. We didn't have a ton of metrics. So, that's why we don't have, you know, a ton of information. All right? But it is very important. Let's just use, like, Jazz Chisholm, for example, since he's on the very top. And it's usually easier to, to read. So, we see base hit 2B. Let, let's just talk about the numbers first. So, again, the red side is against a left-handed pitcher, all right? So that's left on left. Jazz Chisholm's tendencies are two to, and one, right? So that means he's pull happy against a lefty, and then runners on first base, let's play him a little bit less pull happy as a third baseman, all right? Now, we go over to this side. We see that with a runner on first base, we don't have to necessarily go away from his pull side, right? Now we're going to just play two the entire time. He chops ground balls to two strikes. You know, runners in scoring position, 2K, shortstop at two. So basically, um, he's going to be hitting the ball at short. These are some tendencies. These are some notes that it's always important to, like, stay in the loop of. So um, they do change whether you're looking. This is definitely a mistake that I've had, you know, in the middle of the game where we have a starting pitcher who's a lefty, and then we take him out for whatever reason in the fifth, sixth inning, and I forget to flip over my card inside my hat. So I'm looking at the lefty side, even though there's a righty on the mound. This is just a common mistake. Um, for the most part, the tendencies are very, very similar. So as you can tell, Garrett Cooper uh, against a right-handed hitter, he's going to shoot the ball the other way with runners on first base, which we already kind of knew. Um, he likes shooting that four hole if we read the notes on the left-handed side as well. So as you can tell, he's a zero and then a one against lefty. So he actually pulls lefties a lot better than... Uh, righties. Righties, he has a tendency of staying up the middle or going the opposite way. So this is a way to maybe make one or two steps of an advantage, right? If we have this information and if we start as far as a third baseman, because remember, this is just for the third baseman, all of the cards are going to be different depending on what infield position. And then the outfield positioning has a little bit of a different um, legend, if you will. Like it, it's going to look a little bit different, but it's very, very similar. The idea of this is we want to have a one-step advantage, if possible, on where to play this individual based off of past tendencies. And these past tendencies are in a huge, like, scientific, analytical database. And usually the computer will spit out either a negative one, a negative two even sometimes, because some guys are very, very oppo friendly. Um, a zero, a two, a four, if they're, you know, in need of that severe shift. So this is uh, what that defensive alignment card looks like. You would basically, again, I'm going to pull out my hat so I might feel far away, but you could go something like that and then just put on your hat or you could go sideways um, or you could just, you know, of course, put this in the back of your, uh, you know, your pant pocket. All right. So that's how big leaguers are reading these defensive alignment sheets. And every team has one of these in the big leagues. Every single one of them. Whether players use them or not, it really just depends. When I was in AAA with the Memphis Redbirds, I knew a lot of the players that I was playing against. So I really didn't really need one of these. I didn't have to rely on these. But whenever I was playing a new team and I didn't know the players and I didn't know their tendencies, that's when I would refer to this to see where I should play them. Because, of course, knowledge is key. So this is one of the most important things that defenders are using in the big leagues right now to be able to have that one-step advantage. All right, well, there you have it. Now you know how to read defensive alignment sheets. Guys, my name is Evan Mendoza. I can help you play baseball at the next level. If you're a varsity high school baseball player looking to play in college, I can help you land a college commitment. And not only land a college commitment, but land the right college commitment using my triple play, which is physical development, mental development, and the recruiting guidance. Guys, click the link down below in the description if you want to learn one-on-one -on -one with a seven-year pro baseball player between the St. Louis Cardinals and San Diego Padres. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is some really, really cool information that we covered today. So I hope you use it. I hope you understand how serious we take the game of baseball at the higher levels. And if you need to take that game um, a little bit more seriously, maybe you need a little bit more structure or guidance. Guys, that's exactly what my Mendoza Baseball Academy is all about. So again, click the link down below in the description if you want to learn from me.